Hey! Good evening! Although in June it feels more like afternoon because it's still so sunny. Yes. Which is awesome. Yes, it's a little strange when you go to bed and it's not quite dark out, but. Yeah. Because we go to bed early, so. We head up about 9 o'clock, but you guys know that because you watch us. That's it. Um, so, want to tell you about our pantry? You can kind of see the top up there. We don't have quite have the doors in yet, but Russ finished all the shelves. Let's see if it'll show you. Look at them. Aren't they fun? You did a good job. You, I don't know if you can see the bottom. You might be able to see the bottom. Look. It slides out. Mm -hmm. How fun is that? So, I didn't put stuff in it yet because I wanted to show it to you what was empty because you know, once it has stuff in it, then it's going to look all like messy. It look like it has stuff in it. No matter how good it looks, it's going to look messy because it's a pantry. It's a pantry, yeah. But you, get, you gained about six inches on each shelf. I know. Depth. Yeah. So. And did you add an extra shelf or did we end up with the same number of shelves? I think we wound up with the same number, although it feels like there's more. But I think maybe because, like I said, they're wider, so. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And you, you gain the space on top. Yeah, the space on top is going to be great. That's for the space where you put stuff that you never use and you throw away when you move. Right, exactly <laughs> why I did it. Uh, so I wanted to update you on our workouts because I think we told you last time or the time before that we got some new pieces of gym yeah. equipment and we canceled our gym membership. So for the first time in 40 years, Russ is not the member of a gym anymore. Right. Yeah, or owned one, one or the other. Either owned it or was a member of yeah. it. Yeah, so tell them about your workouts and how you feel like they are now. I think my workouts are great. I, I, honestly, the gym I, we were going to here, I was... My motivation was lacking. I, I go through the motions, but I guess I just got tired of the facility. Mm -hmm. wasn't well maintained. The equipment was ancient, and they weren't updating it. Um, and it's a very big facility, but it's unfortunate. And since we put everything in our basement, my workouts have been great. It's like I got re-inspired, so I'm very happy about that. Yeah, I like it on a couple of different levels. One, we save the drive time, so mm -hmm. that's extra time that we can do other things. Um, I don't have to rush to my 9 o'clock calls anymore because we're done. You just got to go upstairs. It's just got to walk upstairs, so it's fine. Um, I also like it because Russ likes to work out longer than I do, and so mm -hmm. he can start before me or finish after me or whatever, and I'm not trapped at the gym kind of waiting for him to get done. Right. So I'm enjoying that a lot. Um, also, because it's finally warm out, I am biking rather than doing my cardio inside, which is really nice. I have a goal this season of riding 100 miles every seven rolling days. Right. And uh, so far, I've been doing pretty well. You've been well. doing really well. Now, I'm not part of that, by the way. No. And so when he and Nebby, so we have a cart for Nebby, and when they go with me, then we just ride like 15 miles or so. We don't ride nearly as far. Right. But so far, I'm enjoying it. Um, on Sunday, I really should have ridden about 25 miles, but I didn't. But I made it up on Monday, so that was fine. Mm -hmm. Basically, what I need to do is ride four times a week an average of 25 miles is kind of how it works out so i've been really enjoying it i didn't get to ride friday last because it rained yep. which threw a, a wrench in I think we've been getting a lot of rain just a lot of rain for this time of year i think it's strange for yeah. us but the good news is i'm not watering the grass not no, watering the garden not watering the garden none of it yeah. and the garden this year has peas tomatoes peppers. peppers i had an eggplant but i think it got eaten some kind of vine plant Oh, right. We have, of course, the mysterious squash. Every year, squash comes up, and you're never quite sure whether you're going to get cucumbers or pumpkins or cantaloupe. acorn or <laughs> cantaloupe or I don't know. They just I don't plant them. They just come up from the right. compost. So we'll see what they are, assuming they don't get eaten so badly by squash bugs that they never produce. That's the problem. That's the, right? that's now, this might be a little better because it's actually in the garden. Before. I don't think it's going to make no, a difference. It a difference? Mm -hmm. okay. I don't think it's going to make a difference. We'll yeah. see. Right now they're in and among the peas, so they'll have to, you know, fight with the peas until the peas get done here in a few weeks. Right. So there's that. Um, I did get a question that was, are plant-based yogurts as healthy as regular ones? And I, go ahead. That's a, that's a trick question. <laughs> it is a trick question, but I'm going to answer it. Anyway. Go ahead. So the first thing I want to tell you is regular yogurt is not healthy, which is why Russ made the face that he made, mm -hmm. because they are made from animal products, from dairy, from milk, and you might be able to hear Nevi squeaking, there might be a dog marking by, she may bark, so we'll have to see. Um, yogurts are mostly known for their beneficial bacteria that's in them, but there is some question on whether or not the bacteria actually makes it to your gut. It may actually get killed 
in your stomach because your stomach acid is designed to kill bacteria and viruses and anything that might make you sick. And it can't really tell the difference between healthy bacteria and not healthy bacteria. So there is some question about that. Does the bacteria actually make it to your gut? Um, it also has a lot of sugar in it, although that is also an issue with plant-based yogurts. And it comes with all the issues that dairy has, which are the ethical issues of dairy and the casein and the cancer risk of the IGF-1 and mm -hmm. all of the things that come with, uh, with dairy products. So we've talked about ad nauseum, so I won't go into. But so is it as healthy as regular yogurt? It's healthier, although it has its issues, it as, has well. Its issues as well. So I took some notes on some different things. Um, soy yo yogurt, of course, get organic. We tell you that about soy all the time. Um, so get organic and then look for thickeners. That's Maybe. a squeaky door. Oh, wait, that's you look at the dog, tell her to yeah, stop whining. Um, so soy yogurt, get, or get organic and look at the thickeners that they have. They may have thickeners in them that you may not want to eat. So check what they're using for thickeners. Cashew and almond milk are very high water usage. So if you're environmentally conscious, they're not the best choice, but they're still better than cows. Cows have used more water to create yogurt than um, almond or cashew. Almond and cashew also don't have um, calcium. Couldn't come up with the word. Don't have any calcium in them unless they're fortified, which you know is a possibility. Oats, oat yogurt, again, you're gonna wanna look for organic because you wanna avoid the Roundup glyphosate that's in it. Um, and look for things like potato starch, oil, and Flavorings. Those are those are the things you're gonna look for in oat hemp. I've never seen hemp yogurt, but I found it a note on it. So it's very high in protein and omega-3 fatty acids, just like you'd find hemp seeds to be. We eat hemp seeds ourselves. So um, it does require a thickening agent of some kind. So if you find hemp yogurt, it's going to have a thickening agent in it. So make it look at it, make sure you research the thickening agent, decide whether it's okay for and you. And I guess or not. it can't be uh Gelatin, because that's animal based, right? It's not gelatin. It's usually agar gar, which is a, a plant based root mm -hmm. thing. But yeah, look, look for what it look for what it is, what and what you think it is. Just do some research on it. Pea protein, where they only use the protein from the pea to make yogurt, is not a whole food. Apparently, the others they do use the whole food, but for pea protein they don't. It is a legume, so that's you know a positive for it. And it is very often fortified, so it has a very similar nutrition pro profile on the positive side of what uh, cow yogurt does. Coconut tends to be lower in sugar, but high in, and high in antioxidants. Um, however, they do have to add quite a bit of additives to get their texture and taste right. And it's high in saturated fat, like all coconut is. So yeah. we don't eat coconut, generally speaking, because it is high in saturated fat. That is the case with coconut yogurt. Um, it can also be a very highly processed junk food, a yogurt across the board, whether it's plant-based, animal-based, whatever kind of yogurt, it can be very highly processed junk food um, because there's going to be sugar and thickeners and additives and natural flavors. I mean, it's got to have a shelf life to it, right? So. Right. Right. And you can tell I have allergies. You hear it in my voice. My voice is a little bit gargly. Mm. It's because of allergies. Um, and it, like I was saying, it does have natural flavors, which can be absolutely anything as long as it's not petroleum-based. So if you, want, if you want to make sure that it's actually vegan, it should say vegan on it because as we know, plant-based doesn't actually have a legal definition. So they can use it on things that are mostly plants, but then it can have- Like casein or something. Like random that. stuff yeah. in it. Yeah, we, and you see that, we've talked about that when it says non-dairy, it can have casein in it. So just look at the ingredients and make a, a, a smart choice for you and your family and what you think is right for you. Um, and if you can, make sure that you look for um, non-GMO and or organic, not because GMO in and of itself is bad, but because GMO allows them to put chemicals like Roundup and such on them and then you, then you have that issue. So something to be aware of. Um, you can make your own. And I, I did do some searching for you know, how to make yogurt. And all of them were like, oh, it's easy. And then I read it and I'm like, I'm not doing that. It's easy. It's a seven-day process. Eight well, hours a day. The challenge with it is, is that if you don't have the right stuff to make it, it can be a little, because it has to, it basically requires the right bacteria and the right temperature. And the temperature has to be warm enough for them to grow, but not so hot that they, it kills them off. All these rules. So you can make your own. I'm not gonna do it, partly because yogurt isn't that important part of my diet. I, it's not a, a part of our diet at all. We don't use it at all. Um, I do know that for some recipes, like we, what did we have this weekend? We had, um, tzatziki 
which is a, a oh, usually oh, Greek yogurt base, but our friend made it with a plant-based yogurt. I don't know what kind. We went to her house and she made it. So recipes like that that call for it, I would say, yeah, go ahead. It's not it's not bad for you, but I wouldn't make it a staple food mm -hmm. if that's a you know fair assessment. But it was really good. The tzatziki she made was really good. It was very good. good. It was yes. yummy. Everything was good. Yeah. Um, oh, so we had another interesting question. This is something that we've talked about briefly, I think, once in the past four years. And that is, what does it actually feel like to be hungry? And mm. the reason that this is an interesting question for me is that some of you may know I was anorexic in my 20s. And so my body doesn't do a good job of saying, hey, I'm hungry. I kind of get a, oh, I could eat. Um, and then I go from, oh, I could eat to I'm going to eat my arm. Like there's no middle ground for me as to what that is. And what I found is because of that, if Russ is eating, I tend to eat even if eh. And that can lead to me eating more than I probably need for my you know, upkeep or whatever. So I want to have a conversation with you because you may be more normal than I am. I'm not sure. <laughs> what does it feel like to be hungry? For me, I think I told you this earlier too, is... I can know I'm hungry when I start thinking, oh, maybe I'll just have some chips, or maybe I'll just have some pretzels, or maybe I'll just have some peanuts. When I start looking for that, I'll call it in-between meal Munchy food. Munchy food. Right. Um, that means I'm hungry. So mm -hmm. at that time, I'm just better off eating, and then it'll prevent me from going ahead and going, because once, you know, who eats one chip? Right. You know, so, you know, so I try to, that's when I realize that I'm yeah, I know for me, if you do get out munchy food, it's very easy for me to be like, oh, well, I'll have one or two of those. And then pretty soon it's like, oh, boy, that's... Yeah, you, and it you always, never eat just one. I mean, it always like, bothers my gut. I yeah. always end up bloated if I eat chips or pretzels or anything like that. I always end up bloated. It never does me any favors. Mm -hmm. So I personally, if it were just my house, would not buy them mm -hmm. because that's how I don't eat them. I don't keep them in the house. But... I know you really like crunchy things, and, and he, he a, can handle it. Like, his yeah. metabolism can handle it. Because I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a complex carbohydrate junkie. Yeah. I mean, I just like breads, and I like grains and things like that. I don't have that over any sugar or anything like that. So So I'd be really interested to hear from you if you want to you know, email me or message me on Facebook or whatever. And tell me, how do you know that you're hungry and not just, eh, I can eat, or oh, it's convenient, or oh, I feel like. One way that I have suggested to clients that seems to work well is if you think oh I could eat and you're like oh I want to have chips or I want to have you know something very specific and other things when you're like well instead I could have it's like yeah I don't want to eat that maybe you're not as hungry right. you remember when you were a kid and you used to say I'm hungry and your mom would offer you like an orange and you'd be like I don't want an orange and then you're not very hungry then right I don't know about you my mom used to say that well, it's true. I mean, because if you were hungry, whatever is edible, you're going to go for it. Yeah. Well, within reason, obviously. Yeah. yeah. So that's one way, kind of, do I want to eat what, you know, something healthy, something good, whatever, or do I want to munch? Mm -hmm. so that's kind of one thing. Right. One and way. It's, it's, it's interesting because, like, for me, like, we have our fasting days, and sometimes I just can't wait to eat. Like, I'm hungry, and I know I'm hungry, and I want to eat. And other times, we'll go 2, 3, 4 o'clock in the afternoon, and you'll say to me, you know, did you eat it? And I'm like, no, I didn't eat because it's just, I don't know, just because I'm not hungry. So, yeah. interesting. So I'm trying to pay more attention to that myself personally. Like, because we always say, right, eat when you're hungry, stop when you're full. And it's hard to tell if you don't really know what hunger is. And a lot of us have never really experienced true hunger. I mean, probably never will. Be, unfortunately, because we yeah. live in a land where that's not a thing. But... Being able to tell, is it just that, oh, I could eat because food is convenient, or do I really need to eat? And paying more attention to that. So I'll keep you updated on how that goes for me. To be continued. Yes. Um, I also wanted to talk to you about, I found um, an article about thyroid stuff. And I know many of you, like me, have a thyroid condition or know someone who has a thyroid condition. It's pretty common now. It's bizarre how common it is. So... Um, there's Graves' disease, which is an overactive thyroid, and then there's Hashimoto's, which is an underactive thyroid, and then there are just things that are kind of non-classifiable that are thyroid issues that can cause your thyroid to be over or underactive. There's also a thing called, I'm gonna see if I can say this, I'm not sure, hamburger thyroid toxicis, toxis, toxosis, anyway. It's caused because 
They're supposed to take the, the thyroids out of cows before they grind stuff into hamburger, but if they don't do it or don't do it well, you can end up with the thyroid in the hamburger meat, and then you can end up with the symptoms of an overactive thyroid because you're eating basically uh. hamburger that has thyroid in it. So anytime you get ground anything, whether it's ground chicken, ground turkey, ground whatever, if, it ha if the animal had a thyroid, then there's the risk, not saying it's 100%, but there's the risk that there could be thyroid in it because they didn't remove the, the um, gland correctly. Hmm. So something to think about. Hashi's, as it's called, Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Um, Hashi's is an inflammatory disease, and so naturally an anti-inflammatory di diet, i.e. plant-based di diet, plant diet, is going to help. Um, they have seen that there's some good bacteria that aren't as active in people with thyroid in their guts. It's not as active, and eating plants can help that because you know adding the fiber helps with the good bacteria. Also, you need to be aware of your iodine intake. We um, have, what's that? Uh, dulse. Yeah, it's a seaweed, and we just put a pinch of it in our oatmeal every day. If you have our oatmeal recipe, you know that. Um, and it's because if you are eating plant-based, you can be low iodine if you're not taking in um, sea cucumbers and other kinds of sea plants that have iodine, iodine in them, so that's why we, we do take in um, right. a little bit of salt. Assuming you're not using ionized salt too, right? Right, ionized salt, yeah, which you know some people don't. Interestingly, thyroid diseases are both hereditary and environment. There's a, only a 50% concordance with identical twins, and what that means is that if you take identical twins and one of them gets a thyroid condition, there's only a 50% chance that their, their twin will, which means there has to be some kind of environmental um, thing Influence, there. Yeah. So you don't, you don't have any idea what it is. And some of it could be um, hydrocyclic amines, which are caused by cooking meat at high temperatures. We've talked about them when you cook meat on a grill, you, you end up with those. Um, also polycystic aromatic hydrocarb hydrocarbons, which are, is a flame retardant that's no longer made, but it is still found in the fish cycle and, and um, probably in the chicken cycle as well because they're still feeding the feces and the, the leftover parts. crap, yeah. the parts, that's a good word, from one generation to the next. And so um, the toxins they continue stay. to carry over because they're in the bodies that they're feeding to the next generation. Um, another thing that was talked about with thyroid, um, specifically for Hashimoto's, was half a teaspoon a day of black cumin, which is nigella sativa. And I do have black cumin in the house. I a half a teaspoon is a lot. Yeah, you may not think so. Oh, a half a teaspoon is nothing. Yeah. Well, well so for, I put it in our um, hummus. Like I put a tablespoon of it in a whole thing of hummus, which is great, but that's not really a half a teaspoon a day for me, for my thyroid. Yeah. So I tried like putting it on my salads and I, it definitely adds a kick because it's kind of a peppery, lemony kind of flavor. Um, I haven't done it every single day, but when I remember I am trying to do it, um, obviously I have no idea if it's making a difference. And another benefit, side effect that you get from it is it can lower your cholesterol if you have a cholesterol mm -hmm. issue, which is why I got it originally. I did not realize it, that it was good for, um, thyroid. for thyroid. Yeah, so something to, to think about if you, um, that, oh, I, I did make a note that if you have Hashi's, specifically, that's how it was studied, that half a teaspoon a day makes a difference. It might be inflammation related. Um, but another study that looked at people who had just had um, hypothyroidism for any reason, not specifically in, um, Hashimoto's, which is an inflammation disease, it, they didn't get the same results. Now, there's a lot of different reasons there could have been. They were taking... The, the black cumin with their medication, like there's a lot of confounding variables, but I did want to let you know that that is something that did happen. They didn't get the same results um, with that. Um, all right, one more thing, what's over here? So I want to talk about fasting. I know we talk about fasting a lot, but I want to talk about fasting. Incidentally, just want to cut in one second here. If you have Netflix, there's a new, new series, I guess it's on there, called Humans. I think it's, that's all it's called, right? Just humans. But it has a lot of good segments in it. One was about fasting, and, after, and we watch it, and we're like, damn, I wish the, the science behind fasting wasn't so good. You know? That's what we always say, right? I wish the science wasn't so good, because fasting is hard, and it's not fun, and mm -hmm. blah, blah, and whatever. But the science is really good. But the, the question that I got was that um, 
this one member was saying that they fast, but then they find when, the, when it's time to break their fast, they're reaching for the junk foods and the easy things to eat because they don't want to take the time to make something, which I totally get. Yeah. When you're fasting and you're ready to eat, you're ready to eat now, not 20 minutes from now when you get something you know, made. So some ways to work around that is, of course, to have stuff that you could just heat up, whether you know, you're batch cooking or you know, that, that's always the easy answer is to, to, to do that. The other thing is to just have to start a little bit earlier so that when you're done fasting, you can eat or have just a little more self-control until you're done. <laughs> but I know on fasting days, I, I can't make things like hummus or whatever because I taste things as I go to see, does it need more seasoning? Is it okay? Does it not? And I realize I can't do that when I'm fasting. So no. I make hummus and then I'm like, I have no idea if that's any good or not. I don't know if it needs any more. And she more can't get me to taste it because I'm fasting too. Right. So that that's kind of a challenge. But yeah, I, I totally get why fasting would make you eat junk food because it's easy and you're hungry and you're ready to eat. And fasting is not fun. Oh my goodness, my voice is going to go. Yeah. Allergies. That's how it goes. And I think... This is super sad. I think some of it is I'm allergic to Nebby, but not really badly, just enough to be scratchy in my throat and my eyes itch a little bit. So not a huge, huge deal. All right, so did you have anything else you want to say about fasting? No, I think that's it. Okay. How are you doing on time? Okay, I'm on, I'm on track. I'm on track. I'm doing good. So the last thing I wanted to talk to you about was um, an article that McDougal sent out in his newsletter, Dr. McDougal. Sorry, my nose is itching. Dr. McDougal sent out in his newsletter about uh, lowering cholesterol and how he treats cholesterol as a doctor and kind of when he uses the medication and when he doesn't. And unfortunately, I have to, I'm going to have to give this to you from memory because I read it several days ago and then I went back to go refresh today and take some notes and make sure that I, and he had changed his website and the link no longer works. And I did a search and I couldn't get it to come up. And so then I did a search by year because I could tell what year it was posted. And I went and I found the actual title, but the title wasn't clickable. So oh, I, fail. I, get yeah. those web designers. You're fired. <laughs> so unfortunately, I couldn't get back to the article to, um, to, take my, to take notes on it. So I'm going kind of from memory. But basically what he said is that he wants his patients to have a total cholesterol under 150. That's kind of his benchmark. And that he uses diet and exercise and prescription as a last resort right. as a last resort he does use a little bit of statin prescriptions because he thinks it's that important to be under 150 but one thing that he talked about that i had never heard of before was a thing called gogu a gogulipid it's g-a-g-u-l-i-p-i-d gog gaga gog ha i can't even say it i wrote down how to say it i still can't say it Gog ha you lipid. Anyway, I looked it up because I was like, oh, I've never heard of that. It's um, an Ayurvedic medicine. It's been used for uh, several thousands of years, which most people are like, oh, then it's safe. It's all good. It's whatever. Um, but I did some more research on it, and I found an article by the National Institute of Health from 2017 that said it could actually cause hypercholesterolstemia, in male mice. Now, obviously, this is one study in mice that are male. So, not a whole ton of data, but still, the fact that it's supposed to be lowering cholesterol and that can actually increase cholesterol and lead to atherosclerosis and even death and you know heart disease and all these different issues is a little bit scary. Um, I would like to see more science on that. I tried to do more research. There wasn't a whole lot on there. So I did find something at WebMD which I do not recommend that you take as a solid source, a solid source yeah. because they are part of the medical community. They do have a lot of ads on their, on their website. I mean, to read an article from them, you have to click through it because it's basically clickbait so they can put more ads. Mm -hmm. So take what I'm about to say with a grain of salt because this is the only source I could find. I wanted to share it with you. So WebMD says that in Ayurvedic medicine, it's used for acne, atherosclerosis, weight loss, rheumatoid, rheumatoid, and rheumatoid arthritis, but there's not a lot of evidence or support for uh, most of that. What it is, is it contains plant, boy, plant, I can talk, hold on. It contains plant-based steroids that lower cholesterol and triglycerides and may reduce redness and inflammation in acne. 
So that was kind of, that's what Ayurvedic medicine says that it does, is that it has plant steroids in them that lower cholesterol and reduce redness. Um, it has worked for cholesterol, people with high cholesterol in India. So studies that are done in India on people in India, it has worked, but it has not given the same result in Western medicine, in, on Western people and Western cholesterol. I don't know what to say about that. I don't know how they could possibly get that kind of difference um, when it comes to testing something like that. Yeah, I don't know. You think it'd be identical. The only thing I can think of is different environments, different um, foods, different things that we eat. I don't know. Cholesterol should be cholesterol it should in humans. Be. Yeah. But um, the the studies that have been done in India do say that it works, and the studies that are done in the in the Western world haven't been able to replicate that. I can make up all kinds of stuff. I'm not going to do that. Right. Exactly. So. It is considered possibly safe, and that's a quote, possibly safe, when taken appropriately for up to 24 weeks. And there is some research out as far as 75 weeks. 75 weeks is just about a year and a half, just about 18 months, not mm. quite. So possibly safe. Hmm. Um, there yeah. are, oh, there, so I gotta, I gotta act like I'm a TV commercial and, and give you all the side effects that may give you, may cause, Stomach upset, headaches, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, belching, hiccups, skin rash, itching, and, and, and itching at higher doses. Is that it? So, not death, at least not death. Hey, yes. Um, it may slow blood clotting, so if you are on any kind of blood thinner already, don't take it. If you are planning, if you are having surgery, don't take it. If you have to have surgery, make sure you let your doctor know if you are taking it, mm -hmm. because um, it's a big deal. It's not considered safe during pregnancy. If you are pregnant, considering getting pregnant or breastfeeding, do not take it. And then it also did have the warning, may increase LDL and thyroid hormone in the body. So mm. those are things to consider as well. That, that, you know, if, so I don't understand how something can both reduce total cholesterol and increase LDL. I don't understand how that works. You don't know how it works? And what's weird to me <laughs> is that Dr. McDougall uses this. Like, he does give it to people. And I don't know. I would have to have a conversation with him to understand, you know, what the deal is with that. Yeah. So, um, and then it had may interfere with thyroid medications, birth control, high blood pressure drugs, blood thinners, and hormone therapy. There you go. So, I don't think I'm going to be taking it. It's just there's too much unknown. I'm not as confident with it as I, you know, most things like black cumin, side effect, tasty food. <laughs> so that one, I'm like, okay, not, that's not so much of a risk. But this one, I feel like. It's the unknown. It's scary. Gog, gog gulipid, gog -ulipid. It's just, there's too much, well, maybe this and maybe that and possibly this, especially because it then mentioned the thyroid thing. I'm like, no. I already have a thyroid issue. I don't need to be doing anything else that does wonky things to my thyroid. So right. that was uh, that's what I have to share with you. We're really enjoying our summer. We're loving having our mm. little dog. Yes, it's no been doubt. a great time. Um, is there anything else you want to add? Anything you can think of that we need to tell them? Uh -huh. We talked about our workouts. We talked about a little bit about fasting that we were asked about. Yeah, I mean... Showed them the pantry. Showed them the pantry, yeah. About. I think that's it for this month. Yeah? Yeah. All right, well, I guess I'm done on time. Look at that. Look at that. Look at me being all fancy and on <laughs> time. All right, well, I guess with that, then we'll say our little thing that we always say. Which is eat real food. Mostly, mostly plants. plants. Have a great night. Have a good one. We'll see you again next month.